Uh, shall we start off, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Abhilash? Uh, sir, good evening, sir. Uh, please start. Good evening. Okay. Abhilash, sir, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, end the video visible on our side. Yes. Okay. Abhilash, are you going to do it? Sir, fine layer. Fine layer. Exam going. Exam going. You had more than two months to prepare. Okay. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sir, my patient is a 68 year old male patient. Came from Kollam. He is a driver and presented with foreign body sensation throat for past two months and difficulty in swallowing for past one month, and swelling in the upper part of the right side of neck for past two weeks. Patient was apparently asymptomatic two months back. Then he developed a foreign body sensation throat, which was insidious in onset, gradually progressive, and more on right side. One month back, patient developed difficulty in swallowing, which was insidious in onset and pro gradually progressive. Initially, it is for solid food, and now patient have difficulty in swallowing liquid also. And now patient is taking very little quantity of liquid diet only. And there, there is no aggravating or relieving factors. And two weeks back, patient noticed a swelling in the upper part of the right side of neck, which was insidious in onset, gradually progressive. And initially, it was a ground out net size swelling and it's gradually progressed to the percent size of a gooseberry. And there is a history of pain in the right ear and history of weight loss percent and history of loss of appetite. And there is no history of change in voice, no history of difficulty in breathing, noisy breathing, choking episodes, halitosis or throat pain, no history of fever, night sweats, no history of cough by sorrowing, no history of vocal abuse, no history of neck trauma, neck surgeries, surgery center general anesthesia or radiotherapy, and no history of uh, decreased hearing or ear discharge, no history of nasal obstruction, nasal discharge, and no history of nasal regurgitation or retrostenal pain. Abhilasha, can you break here? Just can you go to the first slide? Okay, sir. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, second slide. Next slide. Okay. That's it. That's the slide. Presenting complaints. Not then. Stay presenting illness. That's it. Okay. That is the that is the main core of the history. Le. Yes, sir. Core of the history. So, what do you make out from the core of the history? Or rest of the history is actually next. Next is actually negative history. Yes, yeah, sir. Next is negative history. So, this is the core of the history. So what, what do you make out from the core of the history? Uh, so uh, patient is a 68-year-old uh, uh, male patient. And uh, he presented with the uh, foreign body sensation for past. Now that, that you are repeating yourself, you're repeating yourself. Uh -huh. So what would be the core of history like? See, if you ask me, I would always say the core of history is there is a rapidly progressing dysphagia in a 68 year old man rapidly progressing because you are told two two months duration there was only dysphagia to liquids initially and then i mean bigger part of liquid dysphagia to solids initially solids later on, later on it developed he developed liquids now he can't slow almost almost anything isn't it that's what you return ah, yes, ah, that's it so rapidly progressing dysphagia for past two months along with with standard as foreign body sensation throat isn't it? yes Along with the swelling in the neck. Neck, sorry. Okay. That is the core of the history. Yes. So, are these uh, out there? So, this is a photo. Is it gone? Yeah, only ah, one. One. Okay. One down. Okay. Right. Okay. Can, shall I add one more thing? Or? Yes, sir. Along with that, there is a progressively increasing neck swelling and with the earache, most probably. 
we, we, we are correlating all this. There is a rougher daughter here. Okay. Yes. yes so uh, progressive dysphagia, neck swelling, and earache. That is the core. Yes. Now you have written weight of, I mean, uh, uh, weight loss there. Is it significant? Yes, sir. There is significant. What, what, is, what is the importance of weight loss? Um, sir, an elderly patient, uh, weight loss may indicate uh, a chronic disease like TB or malignancy. No, no, no. No, no. In this Mal patient, weight loss, importance of weight, weight loss, loss in this patient? Uh, dysphagia. Yeah, it dysphagia. validates. It validates dysphagia. It validates that he is having dysphagia and that is almost becoming absolute now. Otherwise, with okay. two two months history, yes. patient to have good weight loss is actually it is unnatural. That means that he really has dysphagia. Agreed? Yes, sir. Okay, now next next slide. Just take the next slide. Now you have written a lot of lot of negative histories. Just tell the reason for each one of them. Why did you take all these negative history? Um, so the negative history for uh, change in voice, a difficulty in breathing, noisy breathing, and choking episodes to roll out the uh, involvement of larynx, vocal cords, whether there is a the vocal cord palsy or hemilarynx fixation and fever night sweats uh, to roll out TB and uh, history of neck trauma, neck surgeries and surgery central GA to roll out any traumatic cause for this dysphagia and radiotherapy uh, post radiation and dysphagia or And to, uh, to roll out any ear pathology, decreased hearing and ear discharge. Ear. And nasal okay. obstruction. Okay, agreed. Next slide. In the past, there is a similar complaint in the past. There is no other significant uh, past medical or surgical history. No history of diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, from the asthma, epilepsy, or bleeding disorder. No history of any drug allergy. And personal history, patients. Mass history in this particular case. In this particular case, uh, what is the final? What is your final diagnosis? Uh, carcinoma, hypopharynx subsite. Uh, okay, okay. Your, your final diagnosis is malignancy with the hypopharynx. Yes. This is okay when you are going on with your history. Now, once you reach your final diagnosis, will you come back? And or what all should you specifically ask for in this particular patient? Once you reach your final diagnosis, if your final diagnosis is malignancy, hypopharynx, laryngopharynx, yes. past history, what all are important? Uh, previous radiation to neck. Treated for any similar malignancy. Anything else? Nutritional deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Anemia is terrific. Okay. Okay. Why? Um, this is a male patient. In a female patient, uh, stands a post tricord malignancy uh, associated okay. with the Pamarosa syndrome. So. You have already mentioned that, isn't it? Earlier you have mentioned about appetite. Mm -hmm. What what was the previous Absolutely. slide? You said you you told something about last slide. You told you told something. Appetite. Just take the previous slide. Appetite. Ah, appetite. You mentioned appetite something about Okay. Okay. Would you mention anything specifically about the lung? This particular patient. Is it important? Yes, sir. Uh, why why is it important? Sir, uh, the chance of uh, a second primary or a uh, metastatic to lung is a possibility. And okay, why, 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 why are you talking about metastasis in this case? Uh, Hypopharyngeal malignancies are uh, easily metastasis. To the Highest incidence distance. of metastasis. Highest incidence. Yeah. And the most common yes, site is lung. Okay. Lungs. Anything else? Yes. You talked about second primary. Agreed. Anything else? Why specifically in this particular patient? Patient point of view, very important. To, uh, to know the pulmonary status and uh, TB. Why pulmonary status is why pulmonary status is important. This patient. 
sir, if, uh, in the treatment part, if we planning for a uh, laryngectomy. That's it. Majority of the treatment options may involve resection of part of the larynx, which might aggravate aspiration. If it aggravates aspiration, already a compromised lung is going to worsen the problem. Or it is not wise to do a partial laryngectomy in a patient whose lung status is bad. This is the idea of looking specifically on any lung disease in the part. Suppose a patient has already has history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchial asthma. Such patients, when you, if you want to aggravate aspiration by doing a partial laryngectomy, then you have to think twice. So that is the significance. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. Personal history, uh, mixed of diet, appetite reduced, bowel and bladder movements normal, sleep adequate, and he is a uh, chronic smoker, 15 BD per day for past 20 years, and alcohol 180 ml per day since past. 30 years. Family history, there is no significant family history. So the addictions there. So, uh, smoking is a uh, respect for developing hypopharyngeal malignancies. What smoking? A smoker has a, a cigarette smoking. You told BD. Tobacco. So. Is it important? Tobacco. We do have more effect than cigarettes. Sir. What is the reference? It is given in Scott Brown. Yes or no? No, sir. It is given in Scott Brown. Okay. Specific risk for hyperpharyngeal malignancies on smoking BDs is, is given in Scott Brown. Your Scott Brown, it is given. You are in that? Okay. Air, air you know, and... No, no. BD is very specifically written there in yes. the squad Brown. Yes. You know uh, what is the basis of that study? There's a study. There's a uh, there's a reference there. You have gone to the reference? No, sir. Mm, that reference, that study was done in Kerala. The study was done in Kerala. It was done by RCC. Specific incidence of high hyperpharyngeal malignancy on smoking BD. And you know where this was done? No, sir. Take a wild guess. Where are you from? Kollam. Ah, very good. The study was run in Karunagapalli. And you no, know sir. name of the study? No, sir. Name of the study is Karunagapalli Cohort Study. Just go and read that. Okay. It is given okay. in Scott Brown. Okay, sir. Okay. So BD specifically increases risk. Specifically mentioned in your textbook that increases the risk of hyperpharyngeal malignancy. Okay. What about the others? Other personal history? Others? This is alcoholic 180 ml per day for past 30 years. Sir. Okay. Why alcohol is important? Alcohol increases the uh, risk of hyperpharyngeal malignancy by acting as a solvent for the uh, carcinogens present in the tobacco and it also causes irritation in the mucosa and okay direct effect also okay on general examination patient conscious oriented cooperative moderately built and poorly nourished no pallor, ectrus, clubbing, cyanosis, fetal edema, or generalized lymphadenopathy. Vitals, temperature, febrile, pulse rate, 66 six beats per minute, normal rhythm, good volume. BP 130 by 90 millimeter of mercury, right arm in supreme position, and respiratory rate, 16 per minute. And cardiovascular system, uh, S1, S2, S, no murmurs. Respiratory system, bilateral air and equal, no added sounds, per abdomen soft, non tender, no hepatosplenomegaly. What specifically you look for in the respiratory system? Any wrong case? Or... We already discussed this, okay. Always yes. look for evidence of what? Uh, secondary, sir. More important than secondary is evidence of past permission. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Central nervous system, no focal neurological deficits, 
and cranial nerve examinations were within normal limits. The ENT examination, oral cavity, mouth opening pool, angle of mouth lips normal, gingivo labial sulcus, gingivo buccal sulcus normal, gums nicotine stain plus, teeth normal, no loose tooth or dental caries, anterior two third of tongue normal, buccal mucosa hyperpigmentation plus, heart palate normal, ophthalmolar trigon normal. And oropharynx normal, and ideal yes. examiner. Yes. Abhilash, you told oral cavity, the first thing was lips. Lips were normal. A person having BD for uh, such a long time, and uh, still you believe uh, lips will be normal? There will be any coating stains. Yeah, did you look for that? Be, uh, be very careful. Do you know why? BD. Yes. There, you must have seen at least BD. BD and cigarette. So the heat produced towards the end will be so high than a cigarette. So majority of these persons, when you look at the patient, you will know that he's a BD smoker. Yes. Be very careful. That's why. Uh, don't tell uh, lips normal. Maybe normal, but you should look for. Okay. Yes, sir. Oropharynx normal. The ideal examination. A visceral proliferative growth with the irregular surface. Once again, once again, once again. Sorry for interrupting you. You told uh, oral cavity nicotine staining is present. And uh, you, uh, did you notice something in the uvula? In the video that you have sent, there is something wrong with the uvula. Did you notice that? In another. Le, there was in some fine. Hmm. Yes, sir, some white patches. No, uh, we will white do one thing. No. We yeah. will do one thing. You describe that, and when you uh, show the video, you carefully look at the eula. Okay, proceed. Okay, uh, in ideal examination, a proliferative go to the irregular surface seen in the I seen involved in the medial wall of right piriform fossa. Lesion extends superiorly to the array of fold, posteriorly up to the array fold, and the inferior margin couldn't be visualized. Right array of fold appears bulky. And the lateral wall of right piriform fossa not involved. Apex of the piriform not visualized. Pooling of the saliva present. And glottic space adequate. Left piriform fossa normal, base of tongue normal, epiglottis normal, valicular normal. And right vocal cord restricted mobility present, left vocal cord mobility normal, and hemicarynx is not fixed. Just can, can you pause there? Uh, you will pause here. So this is not the you will just can you just pause on the you will. I hope you saw the finding already. Is it normal? No, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, you should have posted that uh, type. Okay. Anyway, proceed with uh, uh, that uh, indirect laryngoscopy. Sir, left vocal cord restricted mobility present, right right vocal cord restricted mobility present, and left vocal cord mobility normal. Hemilarynx is not present. Is it like that? You told two things very yeah. uh, boldly. One, it is not fixed. And yeah, yeah, that's it. The restricted mobility, you look carefully once again. That is the only sole thing in this particular case. There are no doubts that the vocal cord is fixed there. Why do you want to say with restricted mobility not fixed? I also feel it is a fixed ME larynx and uh, absolutely no movement. Yes. Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe it's a problem of the video. Even opposite side on the ventricular band, then something whitish. I don't know. Maybe it's a problem of the video. Opposite side on the ventricular band. I also initially thought, but yeah, later yeah. I found that there is a light reflection. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, Anish, if you look at this picture, what is the first finding you are seeing? You describe that uh, uh, finding. Now, what are the yes. things you are seeing now? This no. Is no, you start no. from above. You start from above. You are seeing from above and you are seeing uh, one thing, then you are seeing a slough. So you start from the finding above. Okay, so the array epiglottic fold ah. is bulky and edematous. And what about the arytenoids? And arytenoids are medially rotated. <laughs> you compare with the opposite uh, arytenoid. That arytenoid, the right side arytenoid is also very small. Small kiss. Okay, so first finding is the epiglottic fold and arytenoid is bulky and edematous. Edematous. Am I right? And yes. then you are seeing the what you are seeing. Yeah. A slough. Yeah. On the yeah. uh, medial surface of the pyriform sinus. Medial wall. Okay. Medial medial wall wall. Right pyriform sinus. Okay. Yes. And again, deep inside, you told the lateral wall is normal, apex is not visible. You can see mm. some proliferative growth there, isn't you it? You can see, you can see that. Apex yeah, it is clearly it. visible. It is clearly visible. There is a growth with a little bit of pooling also. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There you can see the growth. So the, I thought that is why you told it is a ulcero proliferative lesion. And uh, the problem, we are uh, trying to uh, train you for the exam. Okay, that's why we are telling repeatedly two, three things you told it is not there, but actually they are present. Number one, the fixity. It is fixed. No doubt. It is not, uh, you told, restricted mobility. No, that is mm. also not correct. So actually in this case, right amylarynx is fixed. Then you told the apex is not visible. It is visible. And there is uh, a growth, filling. Okay. So can you, uh, after seeing all these, Indirect laryngoscopy, that is the only positive finding in this particular case. So that description is very important. Yes. Abhilash, is there any other finding there? Just start from the beginning. Just start the video from the beginning. Just now. What is the finding now? Other kind of finding. What is that? What do you call this appearance? And that is exactly the reason why the patient had an edematous. You saw the eula. Eula was a bit edematous. This is exactly the reason why the patient has had an edematous eula. What is the finding? What is this known as? Mucosa. You can see the posterior pharyngeal wall mucosa. There are ups and downs on the posterior pharyngeal wall mucosa. This is known as? This is known as cobblestoning. And cobblestoning is indicative of what? Chronic. Chronic? Anemia. <laughs> no, no. That can predispose to malignancy. It is indicative of florid reflex. Oh. Laryngopharyngeal reflex. That means that this patient has florid laryngopharyngeal reflex. And that is a forerunner of malignancy as well. He has all predisposing causes as well. So the, yes. this should, all, you should always mention. There is evidence of reflex you should always mention. Why? Because this is important, predisposing cause. Okay. Second okay. point, as Sadish has pointed out, it is involving the apex of the pyriform sinus. Yes. As per our reassessment now. Okay. Is it important? Yes, sir. Uh, why is it important? Why is, why is your first finding? What is the importance of your first finding? That is involvement of only the medial wall of pyriform sinus. And then involvement of the apex of the periform sinus. How does it differ in your management? Um, so if the medial wall only involved and hemilarynx is not fixed, then we can go for a conservative surgery. 
Okay. And if the piriform apex is involved, the conservative subjects are not possible. We have okay. I know you are I know you have read this. Why? I want to know the reason. Why conservative surgeries are not possible if the piriform sinus apex is involved? Apex is closely related to the trichoid cartilage. That's it. That's it. That's if you need an intact trichoid ring. Yes. For a conservative laryngeal surgery, you need an intact trichoid ring. And that's the reason. Okay. Just tell me the boundaries of the piriform sinus. Sir, piriform sinus are divided superiorly in the membrane spot and inferiorly in the cartilaginous spot. And membrane okay. spot. Uh, medially bounded by area fibrotic fold and uh, laterally bounded by the uh, thyroid membrane and inferiorly cartilaginous part laterally bounded by area of thyroid cartilage and medially bounded by uh, cricoid and what about the vertical extent vertically uh, extend from the um, pharyngeal fibrotic fold uh, from the upper limit, pharyngeal fold and lower limit, lower limit continues into the cervical esophagus. What are the subdivisions of the laryngopharynx, hypopharynx? There, is, there are three subsites, sir. Uh, Pyrifon fossa, post area, and posterior pharyngeal. Subsites are pyriform fossa, posterior pharyngeal wall, and post-cricoid areas. Okay, what is the extent of the posterior pharyngeal wall? Uh, up, uh, from the level of hyoid bone to the lower level of cricoid cartilage. Lower level of cricoid cartilage, really? Posterior pharyngeal wall? What is the extent of the post-cricoid region? Um, from the upper border of uh, arachnoid to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. So then, then how how can this match? So what is the extent of the posterior pharyngeal wall? It is a uh, level of the hyoid bone to the upper border of the cricoid. Okay, that is a vertical extent. What about the horizontal extent posterior pharyngeal wall? Um, so uh, two uh, vertical lines drawn uh, through the arachnoid when the vocal cords in the cadaveric position. Very good. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, Ablash. Slightly deviating from the finding, can you tell me how will you do an indirect laryngoscopy? Uh, sir, uh, first we uh, explain the patient about the procedure, and uh, uh, in the sitting position, examiner sit in front of the patient and uh, place a headlamp and. Um, the ideal mirror, uh, indirect laryngoscopy mirror can be uh, defaulted using heat. Uh, or direct laryngoscopic mirror? Indirect laryngoscopy. Hmm. So, no, you do direct laryngoscopic mirror. Hmm. What is a normal size? Where, you, where no. will you look for the size of the mirror? Have you used indirect laryngoscopic mirror? Yes, sir. What are the numbers you have seen? One, two, three. So you should see. Actually, when you turn, yes, sir. the back side of the mirror, there will be a marking. It will be written three, four, five. And in adults, which size you will use? Three or four. Sir. You can use the biggest mirror without causing discomfort to the patient. There is no particular size. If the mouth is very big, use the biggest mirror. Why? You need not tilt so much. With one, uh, intro uh, when you introduce straight, you will be able to see the maximum structures. Okay. Yes, but if the patient has got a severe gag, you must be very cautious because it should not touch sides. That's all. Uh, there is no fixed size. Okay. But you should always know what are, uh, where will you look for the size. It will be asked in exam. Okay. So 
you explain the procedure to the patient you uh, either use a head mirror or a uh, uh, lamp ah, okay then then take a mirror okay sir then uh, heat the back of the uh, mirror with the spirit lamp sir you uh, abhilash be very careful this will be the simplest question you will be asked you are never supposed to heat the back of the mirror you are supposed to heat the mirror mirror spirit okay no uh, uh, so be very cautious you are so if you are using a spirit lamp you are supposed to heat the mirror not the back of the mirror okay then okay. Uh, then check the uh, temperature sir sadish sadish one minute okay why 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 abhilash why did sadish tell like that why you should not heat the back of the mirror sir the coating in the back of the mirror അറിയത്തില്ലെങ്കിൽ <laughs> 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 Flash, we have majority of times we dip it in hot water, so both the sides will be heated. But ideally, is it is a spirit lamp that you should use, and you should heat the mirror yeah. on the back side, and then check. You are right. Check the temperature. Temperature. Why you are uh, heating? Avoid fogging, sir. Uh, then right. ask then? the patient to uh, protrude the tongue and to hold the tongue with the uh, gauze piece and ask the patient to uh, breathe through the mouth and to introduce the no tell me how to tongue which ഇൻഡെക്സ്റ്റ് <laughs> yeah examine systematically from base of tongue valicula epiglottis like that and then assess the vocal cord during quiet breathing isn't it yes sir uh, then only you will go for phonation okay. isn't it yes sir mm. then then record the findings in a paper so with the yes, mirror inside the mouth no sir whenever you the see ablash you it will sound very simple but definitely it will be asked in the exam and yes. immediately the examiner will get, will get an idea how many indirect laryngoscopy you must have done problem is nowadays since we have the rigid endoscopes we are familiar and very easy but yes. you should always do indirect laryngoscopy okay so uh, then you uh, take out the mirror remove the gauze and uh, uh, actually i thought you will be telling very in detail but before doing indirect laryngoscopy what all things especially a person after 60 years of age you should look for before introducing catching the tongue putting a putting a mirror inside for the extension of neck no you should check whether patient has got any dangers ah uh, if danger is there you ask to remove the danger okay so these are very simple things but you should always tell okay yes. and uh, uh, then remove that then only you should do yes sir and do usually we were taught 
if you are supposed to draw two diagrams one during normal breathing another during phonation okay two diagrams should be drawn okay anything to add shibu uh, abila sir yes sir you told you will say ask the patient to say e ala endar ask the patient to say a uh, a uh. okay or e which one do you prefer here in this patient please yes, sir why uh, when patient on it e the brain from get open see i have dug up a hole and invited you to jump into the hole you have gladly consented and you have jumped into the hole what is the difference between asking the patient to say e and a what happens there uh, when patients say e the vocal cord will be in adductor position a <laughs> <laughs> ah, vocal cord will never adduct ana Okay. Both are uh, 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 so there should be something there. Why should we say ah? Uh, why should we say e? Actually, in this particular case, both are important. That's why I asked the question. I don't know. Okay. Now, when you say e, e is a high pitch sound. When you make the patient say e, since it is a high pitch sound, the external tensor, especially the cricothyroid, will contract. When the cricothyroid contracts, what it does is it actually lift up the epiglottis vesicular complex that means that epiglottis comes up and that is exactly when you get to see the larynx in in chamber nokia when we are doing in that laryngoscope we just see when you ask the patient to say e actually the slowly the epiglottis lifts up and you will be able to see the larynx that is because e is a high pitch sound okay, okay. so you are asking the patient to say e to visualize the larynx properly and r is a low pitch sound when you when you make the patient say ah actually which part is becoming more visible yeah. so other part the laryngopharynx becomes ah hypopharynx becomes more yeah. visible that's the reason why i told in this particular case both are important asking the patient to say e and asking the patient to say ah is important in direct laryngoscopy okay in direct laryngoscopy itself if you are not very really careful you can fail in a hostile examination should you should you should be thorough with in that laryngoscopy why because it is a basic test which we should know as shadish has already mentioned you should know what should you be specific okay right yes yes uh so next examination there is a single irregular swelling approximately 2 into 2 cm size in uh of right side of upper part of neck which is hard to affirm to hard in consistency mobile and not fixed to underlying structures and the skin over the swelling is pinchable and on contract contracting skin of pleno mastoid <laughs> and there is no other pal palpable swelling in the neck trachea or central and laryngeal framework normal just just just, just a minute just a minute is... devil to uh, so you have already made a preconceived yes. idea that this is a lymph node that's what you have written you have already written there is a right level to lymphadenopathy and then you have described the swelling okay actually you should come at an inference after you have described the swelling so ideally it is always better you describe the swelling if it is a level 2 swelling always say you can see a swelling at the level of where is the swelling at the level of hyoid bone ah uh, above the level of hyoid bone oh that's it that, that means that you sh you should be specific there and then later on make an inference that this is a lymph node okay you have already written there is level 2 lymphadenopathy that it always give an impression later on to an examiner that you already has re received a tip on the case so you should never do that okay this is to help you in your examination agree okay now tell me what are the points what are the causes of neck swelling since you already told this is a case of malignancy hypopharynx what are the causes of neck swelling in hypopharyngeal malignancy most probably a metastatic node 
or a okay direct extension of the tumor into the neck. How how does it how does the tumor come out come out of the piriforms? I mean, come out of the hypopharynx. Um, sir, uh, uh, tumor involving the lateral wall of the piriform sinus can uh, enter into the neck through the thyro pierce in the thyroid. Okay, thyroid membrane. Very good. Then. then Causes of neck swelling, one you told is lymph node. Number two is uh, erosion through the extension through the thyroid head membrane, direct extension outside. Then. If I am I am not mistaken, there are at least five reasons. You told two. And then we react to lymph node. <laughs> okay, ah. just lymph node, let it be one. Then extension through the thyroid head membrane number two. What else? Oh. Already yes. we know this particular patient, there is involvement of the apex of the piriform sinus. This particular, that's why I'm asking the question, isn't it? Already we know this. We have agreed that sinus, there is an irregular, what's it, ulcerative lesion. Mm -hmm. If that is so, what can happen? You already told the apex of the piriform sinus is your cricoid cartilage. Okay, a cricoid mm, cricoid membrane the tumor can be extended in the neck. Ah. Where? 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 Where does it go? Through the cricothyroid membrane. Tracheal esophagus. Cricothyroid membrane is in close contact with what? Laterally, outside. Your anatomy. <laughs> You have the lobe of the thyroid gland there. It goes to the thyroid gland. That is number three. Okay. Yes. Number four, the tumor itself can cause erosion. I just so I'm going to finish it off. I don't want to get stuck here. Tumor itself can cause expansion of the laryngeal framework. So it can appear like a neck swelling, number four. Number five, sometimes the tumor may encase the carotid. You know, your, two, your uh, stage 2B, I mean 4B, can cause engagement of the carotid. When it causes engagement of the carotid, again, it appears like a neck swelling. So I think there are almost five reasons why there should be a neck swelling, especially hypopharyngeal malignancy. Okay. So that is the reason why you should never get a preconceived idea that this is a lymph node. Never write this is a lymph node at the first, first instance. You just describe and then come to a conclusion that this is a lymph node. Okay. Right. Abhilash, one more thing. You told this was the inspection finding or inspection palpation, everything together? Everything together. Okay, then uh, you told it is an irregular swelling. Number two, approximate size, about the size. So once you are combining everything, you should measure with a tape and tell what is the size. We, we are supposed to mark, isn't it? Yes, sir. And then there is no approximate there. Why this is important? Approximate two centimeters, approximate 3.5 centimeter, you cannot tell. Why? What is the reason? So, staging will be different. The so, nodal staging is based on multiple factors. Along with that, size of the node size. is also important. And usually I mean, the metastatic node, uh, is it irregular? Number two, you told firm to hard. What is that firm to hard? This I'm usually sorry. happens. This usually happens. Majority of the residents they tell like this soft to firm firm to hard what is the classical description of a metastatic lymph node it's the hard node sir stony hard isn't yes. it so yes. in that one uh, some areas were having some degeneration or was it uniformly hard maybe a very large node have some areas of no, in the case it is uh, approximately two centimeters. That is what it's you told. Hard, hard note, sir. Ah, so uh, uh, try to avoid unnecessary things. You tell there is a, a two into two centimeter or two into one centimeter hard uh, uniform swelling. Or if it is irregular, so if it is irregular, what is the inference? Um, sir, if it is a lymph node, there may be extra capsular invasion. 
okay so you already committed that is a problem when you tell something you must be yes, very sir. cautious just a single word irregular number yes, two sir. firm to hard okay each word is very important and you have to measure the size understood yes, so you committed that there is a extra nodal okay. extension or uh, at least it has missed the capsule that is what i understood okay continue Hala, you told size, Abhilash. Size of the node. Where, where have you written that? I don't see it there. But he told approximately uh, something. Oh, okay, okay. It's not that in the slide. I was all the time I was just looking for that. So size is very important. You let size him measure. Size is very important. Extremely important. Yes. Possibly the most important thing. Yes. Okay. Then uh, there is there is. There is no other palpable swelling in the neck, sir. And trachea, laryngeal framework, normal. And laryngeal crepitus present. No laryngeal tenderness. And bilateral carotid palpable. And nose examination and ear examination were within normal limits, sir. How do you elicit laryngeal crepitus? What is the significance of laryngeal crepitus? The loss of laryngeal crepitus may indicate the post cricoid growth. So it is extremely important here, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is it important? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, what is that? What is that laryngeal capital? What do you mean by that? Sir, the grating sensation produced by uh, movements of uh, posterior lamina of cricoid cartilage against the body of the vertebra. Okay, fine. Abhilash, uh, what is that sign called? Uh, sir, Boca signs. Any other name? Actually, I also knew that uh, there is only one name. But Prot our PG. Yeah, Protest what is that? Signs. Okay, Protest Protest sign. I was uh, not aware of that. Uh, during uh, After four years only, I returned to Toronto. Okay. So I am a little no, bit... Uh, out of touch. It is given in the Scott Bond, Sadi Yeah, yeah, same, yeah. Same so, chapter. The same chapter is given. That's why. Yeah, that's why. Uh, last uh, week uh, in our class, uh, somebody taught me that uh, you are ignorant. You should know that <laughs> it has got another name called Trotter's sign. It is given in Scott Brawl. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, can you tell me, you told Boca sign negative is seen in post cricoid malignancy. In what other conditions you can get uh, absent laryngeal crepitus? Uh, certain uh, retropharyngeal abscess. Continue. At least you should tell five. Uh, sir, sir, uh, young, uh, young uh, in children's, uh, there may be absence of laryngeal properties. And uh, in, even in Is normal. In which textbook it is written? In children, it is absent. You may be right. You tell the just the reference. You tell the common conditions where it is. Uh, don't tell unnecessary contra, contra, controversial answers. Okay, one is retropharyngeal cellulitis, or Perhaps. okay then, okay then, post-traumatic after major acute trauma. Mm -hmm. Post radiations. Okay, after radiation. We fast. Uh, sometimes even in normal populations, normally a small percentage of normal persons. persons. Then, what is infection of the laryngeal cartilage called? Laryngeal. <laughs> I am giving a clue. Another condition. Perichondritis. Perichondritis. So you should tell fast. Okay, these are very simple questions and uh, you should know at least five. Uh, Shibu, uh, children are absent. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Okay. Anyway, I will continue. 
അല്ല വൺ ഒരു ഒരു കാര്യം അഭിലാഷ് യു ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് അപ്പർ ഡീപ് സർവൈക്കൽ നോട്ട് ഇസ് ഡെറ്റ് സോ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ നെക് നോട്ട്സ് ദാറ്റ് കാൻ ബി എൻലാസ്ഡ് ഇൻ മാലിഗൻസി ഹൈപ്പർഫെറിക്സ് സിൻസ് യു ഓൾറെഡി ടോൾ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ മാലിഗൻസി ഹൈപ്പർഫെറിക്സ് വിച്ച് ഓൾ നെക് നോട്ട്സ് കാൻ ബി എൻലാസ്ഡ് ഇൻ മാലിഗൻസി ഹൈപ്പർഫെറിക്സ് ആ ലെവൽ 1 ഫെറിങ്സ് Yes, now you uh, talked about a lot of findings in the neck anything else you look for in the neck or or you made a diagnosis of malignancy laryngo pharynx yes, and then you came back will you look for anything else is skin involvement neck you talked about uh, laryngeal framework uh, laryngeal crepitus so then what no laryngeal tendinitis and uh, carotid spiral anything else all are important even carotid is important anything else would you look for a restricted extension of the neck yes sir why uh, pre vertebral fascia ah uh, that's it especially posterior pharyngeal wall malignancy when there is infiltration of the pre vertebral muscles there can be a restricted extension of the neck again that is important malignancy laryngo pharynx more important there. okay yes. right Uh, diagnosis is malignancy hypopharynx subsite right piriform sinus with the second race in neck and uh, t3 n1 m0 you have restaged that yes and the pharynx is fixed so it's okay for you uh, just just one more point just to make the discussion complete we, we in the symptomatology you talked about some symptoms we were talking about progressive dysphagia in this patient what are the alternate presentations which is possibly more common in malignancy hypopharynx because this gives this discussion gives an impression that majority of this is very unusual what malignancy hypopharynx which presents as progressive dysphagia within 2 months presenting progressive dysphagia total dysphagia is very unusual okay So, what are the more common presentations of malignancy laryngopharynx? Uh, more commonly, patient present with... Uh, Dysphagia is a classical the, presentation of which malignancy? Post-cricoid malignancy. Post-cricoid malignancy. That, but the, now we know this is pyriform sinus malignancy, isn't it? So, what are the presentations of pyriform sinus malignancy? Early symptoms may be a sore throat-like symptoms. Can you, can oh. you be more specific on the sore throat? Foreign body sensation to... unilateral sore throat sore throat more on one side and that is very specific unilateral sore throat yeah. other one is unilateral ear ache we have already discussed then foreign body sensation you told agreed foreign body sensation agreed then then maybe a neck swelling ah he can present as a neck what are the reasons yeah. why the patient should have a neck swelling Yeah, we already told that we all discussed that. we all discussed that yes sir. what about change of voice uh, can be okay sir if the tumor in where in the vocal cord paraglottic space and then the vocal cord fixity. okay vocal cord fixity paraglottic space what are the other reasons that the patient may have a have a problem with the mobility of the vocal cord one is paraglottic space involvement in vocal cord fixity what else, what else? mass effect of the tumor respect to the mobility of the mass effect actually tumor is a laryngopharynx you are actually telling reasons in malignancy larynx so they are saying yes sir mm. malignancy laryngopharynx why should it produce vocal cord restricted mobility or fixity one is agreed it can slip into the paraglottic space from the aryopaglottic fold which is andromedially it can go into the paraglottic space vocal cord fixity number one number two yeah.
അങ്ങ് പുറകിലുള്ള ഏതാണ് വാട്ട് എൽസ് ഇസ് ദർ ബിനീത് ദ ക്രൈക്കർ ജസ്റ്റ് ബിഹൈൻഡ് ദ ക്രൈക്കർ നോട്ട് ജോയിന്റ് സംതിങ് എൽസ് വിച്ച് ക്യാൻ ആക്ച്വലി ലീഡ് ടു ഇമ്പാക്ട് മൊബിലിറ്റി എന്താണ് ആ ദ റിക്കറൻ ലാൻഡ് വെൻഡേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ലാൻഡിങ്സ് ബിഹൈൻഡ് ദ ക്രൈക്കർ നോട്ട് ജോയിന്റ് സോ ദീസ് ആർ ദ റീസൺസ് വൈ ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ഡെവലപ്പ് കോഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ഓയിൽ ഐ മീൻ ചേഞ്ച് ഓഫ് ഓയിൽസ് ഓക്കെ റൈറ്റ് ablash another symptom at least uh, once in a while you should always uh, give due importance to one symptom that patient tells food sticking to the throat after taking food that they haven't uh, swallowed it fully it is remaining there this is very common with the pyrophon polysomatic frenzy then another symptom when they spit out blood stained uh uh sputum or blood stained saliva this can happen in supraglottic malignancy also okay but you must be uh, aware and look specific sites okay so can you uh, tell once again what is the final diagnosis um, so the carcinom uh, malignancy hyperpharynx subsite right pyriform with the metastatic nodding don't tell pyriform you tell the full thing pyriform fossa medial or pyriform sinus or pyriform fossa yes sir now uh, with the metastatic metastatic nodding in the neck level okay uh, level. actually uh, uh, since already you have told that there is a lymph node so you tell malignancy hypopharynx right pyriform fossa then you tell the tnm staging so it will be very easy already you have committed okay so since the me larynx is fixed t3 then n1 uh, shibu should we uh, go for the tnm staging or we will proceed otherwise it will take a lot of time okay okay we'll proceed uh, i am sure ablash you know what is the t staging n staging m stage i am sure so that you can read from any textbook but the importance is looking for the subsites in the node the size and uh, distant metastasis so according to you this is e3 n1 m0 stage uh, 3 sir very good idiom abhilash sadish nerth already sadish has mentioned this see what is the problem of you mentioning irregular surface i don't know whether you realize that Yes, sir. Yes. It's, uh, what, is, what, is the, what is the issue there? Upstairs. What does it mean? It's uh, invaded the uh, ex- extra capsular involvement, sir. Capsular One extra, extra capsular. Number two, it may um, be matted yeah. nodes. Two yes. nodes may be matted and you might think that it is one. Okay. So, always be very careful when you are describing a node. And since extra nodal extension immediately makes 3B, it is very important. Yes. Okay. Uh, sir, general uh, investigation. First, uh, go for a uh, video laryngoscopy and uh, examine the tumor extent. And next is a uh, chest x-ray to rule out any media state and mass. Uh, pulmonary status and the second since you mentioned since you mentioned video laryngoscopy tell me what what video laryngoscopy you mean flexible laryngoscopy flexible laryngoscopy sir. okay now is there any situation where you will go for a rigid laryngoscopy i mean lid, uh, rigid scopy or just discuss flexible versus rigid blow, uh, uh, scopy in this particular case malignancy laryngopharynx it is important that's why i am asking you Alright, do you know the lower extent of the tumor in this mm, case? Which one will you do? Flexible, flexible will be more. Okay, and lower extent of the tumor in which case? In, in which situation? And when the apex is involved or post-cricoid? When there is a post-cricoid involvement. When there is a post-cricoid involvement, it's very difficult for you to pass the scope through the Uh, obstructed area downwards so to see the lower extent possibly you may have to do a flexible okay 
and possibly better visualization may be flexible. What is a specific indication? for rigid endoscopy here in this particular it is important in this case that's why I'm asking no, now there was a bit of a confusion where there was involvement of the apex of the piriform sinus to know that to see the apex of the piriform sinus you need a rigid scopy to go there and visualize you need a rigid scopy okay right uh one more one more one more point what are the what are the just just to complete that what are the indications of uh, um, hypopharyngoscopy and esophagoscopy in, in malignancy hypopharynx? One, you told to know the lower extent of the lesion. What else? Yes. Uh, to know the involvement of esophagus, any skip lesions or secondaries in the... Why, why skip lesions are important in esophagus? Why? Mm -hmm. in why, in, uh, why skip lesions are important here? Sir, see, uh, hypopharynx is... Um... Can cause skip lesions. Why? Why? Submucosal spread, sir. Ah, that's right. Yes. Hypopharynx is notorious for submucosal spread. 60% cases of submucosal spread. That means that you can get second skip lesions in the esophagus. Number two. Number three. Lower extent skip lesions. Number three. I have to take a biopsy, sir. No, no, no. Number three. Diagnostic. We are, we are talking about diagnosis. No. Okay, biopsy is also diagnosed. Still. Number three. Hypopharynx is again notorious for what? It is notorious for second primary. You look second for a second primary, primary in the esophagus. Number three. Okay. Number four. Mm. Number four. And just finish off that. It's you are only you talked only about the lower extent of the lesion. What is the other extent you should see? Lateral extent. Ah, horizontal extent. You should see whether there is a post cricoid involvement clearly. So these are the indications for doing a scopy in malignancy hypopharynx. Okay. okay, right. Uh, then go for a uh, FNAC from the neck node to confirm the diagnosis, to confirm the metastatic. Abhilash, oh. I have a doubt. Sorry. You already uh, did one rigid scopy biopsy, you did a FNAC. Is there any role for radiological investigation prior to your scopy yes. biopsy or you will yes. do after the biopsy? Sir, before the biopsy, we do a radiology so, so whenever you present a case, if you are asked what is the management, you should follow that order yes. uh, as what you do. So you never told about the blood investigations is it important? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, tell all these systematically. You want to know what is the albumin, that is the serum protein. Is it important? Yes, sir. Because all these will affect the outcome. You should plan the treatment. So, blood investigations, test x-ray, you will take a CT scan or MRI scan or both. See, Which one you both, 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 sir. Okay, preferably support to both it is always good. Why? Sir, to know the cartilage involvement, soft tissue extensions, uh, MRI is more sensitive than CT, sir. So, so this is good for the assessment of the tumor bulk or the volume, tumor volume. CT, sir. You told the MRI is sensitive. What about CT? The CT to uh, assess an ignore assessment. No, no. Uh, if MRI is sensitive, what is the identity CT? Obvious. I'm giving you a clue. MRI is sensitive, more sensitive. CT is more specific. Ah, then more specific. MRI is more sensitive, CT is more specific. This is how you learn. Okay. You talked about chest X-ray. What are the uses of taking a chest X-ray? Uh, you know, second uh, uh, metastasis, second primary. Met metastasis is one. Number two, second primary. Number three. Uh, without any TB 
lung okay. aspiration. Okay, existing disease, tuberculosis. Number four, aspiration. Number five, aspiration. Uh, know the pulmonary status. So, okay, to know the pulmonary, cardiopulmonary status also important. Cardio, yeah, cardiopulmonary status. Okay. Yes. So you you have uh, told about blood investigations, then you told about chest X-ray, then uh, CT MRI, then scopy biopsy. Then, yes. what do you expect the report to be? So most commonly, uh, squamosal carcinoma, more common in type of animals. Expected myopsy report of squamosal carcinoma. Okay. Then, just for completion, Avila, should you take a CT chest? This is purely uh -huh. academic, purely academic. Would you take a CT chest? If uh, yes, yeah. when will you take a CT chest in malignancy hypophatics? Okay. Why is it important? Why is it important? Advanced lesions, why is it important? Better pick up in CT scan. This is the answer. Okay. Early metastasis. Up to 3 millimeter metastasis can be picked up in CT scan. Chest X-ray you take in all cases. And you take a CT chest in advanced cases. That means teeth stage 3, stage 4. Or bulky nodal disease in malignancy hypophatics. This is the idea. Okay. Right. Blush, one more thing. Since uh, this uh, training for the exam, he is a paka smoker, alcoholic. Okay, yes. you told uh, second primary, synchronous, metachronous, primary scan occur, skip lesions can occur. So at least in the exam, you are supposed to tell one more investigation. What is that? Pet CT scan. No, no. A pet you can take, but uh, it is mainly for uh, what purpose you do that. That is mainly, uh, I think, a textbook tells that for the uh, recurrence or residual lesion. You can take uh, for anything. But I am asking, I gave the clue. Multiple carcinogens for a long period. I gave the clue also. So for the exam, any other investigation you will tell, you told only uh, hypopharyngoscopy, esophagoscopy. That's the ultimate clue I can Bron give. Bronchoscopy. So what is it called? Panendoscopy, sir. Okay, uh, so it is always. I feel, uh, Shibu, uh, you are yes, um, absolutely, coming. absolutely. Yes. You should always say laryngoscopy and bronchoscopy as well. Okay, so uh, you should tell. Okay, then where are you focusing, Proceed. Abhilash? Bronchoscopy. Where will you focus? Rarely focus bronchoscopy. No. What's the doubt no. there? Why should you do a bronchoscopy after all? We already know this particular patient has involvement of which part? Pyrifon sinus. Pyrifon sinus, which part? Apex. Apex of the piriform sinus is related to what? Lowerly tracheal. Apex of the piriform sinus is related to the cricoid cartilage. Right. The cricoid cartilage comes in relation to the subglottic region of the larynx. That means that when you are doing a bronchoscopy, you should see the subglottis specifically, whether there is any erosion of the cricoid cartilage and tumor coming down into the subglottis. This is the answer. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, um, um, okay, uh, then what will you advise the patient during this stage? You have done the scopies, you have taken a biopsy. Uh, I always think about Pratap and sir. If you don't answer this, you will fail in the exam. Uh, Shibu must have got what I want. <laughs> nice. What will you tell the patient or what will you advise the patient? Uh, either we have to go for a 
surgery or chemo no i already told you, you should advise the patient you should advise the patient to do something first and stop the smoking and continue alcoholism no sir Uh, so you tell to stop both the addictions, isn't it? Number one, and whether it is chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or surgery, what is the prime importance during this period? You tell the uh, bystanders, that is relatives, to do. You told weight loss is there. Yes, sir. General health. Okay, so these are very important things. Protein intake. What about the teeth? The, the, any dental caries should be addressed before Why? going for the treatment. Why? Uh, okay. Osteo uh, radio necrosis of the. Uh, If you are planning a radio therapy, you can lead to secondary osteo radio necrosis. Sure. Uh, these are the things we routinely do. So if you tell very fast, examiners will appreciate your answer. Okay, so we are waiting at least for two weeks for the histopathology report to reach you. During that time, you tell the patient to stop the uh, addictions. Number two, improve the general health, address the caries teeth. Okay, then uh, stage three tumor either weak or for a. Allah, very kind of barney, Allah, Abila say. You never talked about the performance status of the patient. Parjay, no? Yes. Is it important? Yes, sir. Whether Why is it important? The treatment uh, part depend mainly on three factors: and performance mm. status of the patient, mm. and the tumor uh, tumor factors, and the. When the mummy did I change? When the very priority of the why didn't you apply that here? Why didn't you say about performance status, sir? And then, what is the performance status of this patient? What is it known as? Grading known as? Who are you? Grading or delay? Eco. Ah, summary. Eco is not right. ECOG is not right. That's what I said. ECOG. What is the full form? ECOG. Go and read. Okay, performance status okay. as such is a short question. I mean, eight mark question for you. Performance status. What is the importance in malignancy hyperfatigue? Performance status. Why is it important? Uh, sir, a poor per per performance status patient is uh, is is a contraindication for surgery. Okay, one is conservative laryngeal surgery. If the performance status is bad, since there is a risk of aspiration, that can further okay. aggravate the condition. Number one. Number two. I don't want to drag this on. I'll just finish it off. Okay, since it is a teaching teaching program, number two is majority of cases, more than seventy five percent malignancy hyperfatigue is multi modality treatment. Multi modality treatment means the general health of the patient should be good. Even in the advanced stage, palliative treatments number three. Even if it is palliation, still the performance status should be acceptable. That is the issue. That is why performance status. That is very specific. I think specifically the written in your in your textbook. Even in textbook, I think it is written, isn't it? You should always ask. So, in malignancy, these malignancies, digestive tract malignancies, you should always mention about performance status. Okay, you already told the patient has weight weight loss, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Okay. okay. Tell what sir, are you planning? Sir, I can commit in chemo radiotherapy or a total laryngectomy plus. Partial pharyngectomy. You tell your option. You cannot tell uh, you. Uh, two options are there, but in this case, what will you suggest? As per the present norms. Sir, send the patient. And no, no. What is the age? What will you age do? Tra. What is the age? Sir. ഓക്കെ യു ഷുഡ് ടെൽ ലൈക് ദാറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ റീസൺ 
سرا سو بسرفين ده لاجين جيب فانكشن أورجان بسرفيشن أوكي أورجان بسرفيشن one is organ perfusion second one is one very good organ perfusion is agreed what is the other one? what is the other one the surgery can be uh, if the, uh, if, the, if there is any recurrence surgery can be okay there is an option of salvage surgery number salvage three surgery. still number three Number three, the bulk of the disease is not that very large here in this particular patient. If the bulk is very large, the radio, the chemo radiation may not act very well. Here, the bulk is not that very. Even the node is a smaller node. I, you, I think you told two centimeter node, isn't it? Yes, sir. See, that's why I asked you. Very important radiological investigation to assess the tumor volume. It is very important. So in this case, you will uh, go for a concomitant chemo radiation, right? Yes, so what is the dose? Uh, so conventional dose of uh, radiation is 1.8 to 2 gray uh, per dose for uh, six to seven weeks, uh, five days no, per week. Again, again, this is a teaching session. You should always tell what is the total dose. Then you tell what is the uh, uh, daily dose? How many days? That's the way you should answer. It. So 66 to 70 grape total dose. Okay. In 1.8 okay. to 2 grape per day, in five days a week for six to seven weeks. Okay. You told concomitant uh, chemo radiation. So? Along with uh, cisplatin or pyrograssic. Dose? Cis cisplatin, uh, 100 milligram per meter square of body surface area. Uh, what are the days in which it is given? Zero seven. Zero. Mm. Um, Okay, what are the days? No, yeah, you can tell anything. Don't worry. Weekly given. If I'm right, uh, I don't know, uh, know for sure. Uh, uh, three doses. Uh, it is at, uh, yeah, I may be wrong. You should verify. Uh, uh, zero or one, I think it is one to two, two, two and forty six. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You should check, but I think that book says okay, okay, fine. Now, what is the specification? Radiation, radiotherapy. What else will you say? You are, you are asked a question. You are starting the patient on chemo radiation. Radiation. You already told the dose. This is the dose. And what else will you add with that? Along with that? Intensity modulator. Okay. IMRT or? Okay. IMRT or? ABRT, sir. Extended beam. Okay. No, no. Not EBRT. IMRT or? Why do you want to uh, give intensity modulator radiotherapy? to uh, reduce the uh, collateral damage. What collateral so, damage? To the uh, radiation exposure to the surrounding okay. tissue. So what is the other one other than IMRT? It is also known as 3D, 3D conformal radiotherapy. Okay, 3D. IMRT or 3D, 3D conformal radiotherapy. This is what you give. And then what should be the field? Field you said. Uh, uh, sir, uh, including the tumor and the neck. Uh, involved neck nodes. Since so since the neck has to be involved, bilateral neck radiation is also given. From where to where? From the uh, lower border of the mandible to the upper border of the. Eye. So you mean to say that you are going to avoid level two? What is the extent of level two? Sir. 
from the skull base to the upper uh, hmm. hyoid levels. From skull base to hyoid. Now tell me what is a level. what is the peculiarity of malignancy hypopharynx as far as nodes are concerned? Importance. Just tell me. Then you will understand my question. Why is it? Why is neck node? Why are neck nodes important in malignancy laryngopharynx? Sir, even at the uh, time of presentation, seventy percent of the patients. Seventy percent, seventy percent, and that is one side. Ipsilateral seventy percent, and contralateral five percent. Five. Contralateral is almost fifty percent, right? Even at the time of presentation, right? Number two is bilateral neck nodes are possible. Okay. Number three is carcinoma in unknown primary. Occult node is possible. That means that there is no lesion in the hypopharynx still. You can have a node in the neck. Number four is occult node. That is, even if you, there is no palpable node, radiologically there can be nodes in the neck. And that is the reason why the neck has to be extensively covered. That's why you should cover right from the basal skull up to the clavicle in malignancy hypopharynx. Okay. Okay, Abhilash, continue. Treatment is already Yes, sir. After, uh, after the course of chemo radiation, we go for a PET scan to roll out a Next day? Immediately. Yes, sir. One more point, okay. okay. One more point. In the examination, when you are presenting, you say that I will discuss the case in a MDTB. Always tell this, okay. You will always discuss this in a multidisciplinary tumor board because this is standard across the globe that any malignancy case has to be discussed in a tumor board and then only treatment started. So in examination also, you say, tell the same thing. I will discuss with all the specialists involved in the treatment and then I will start treatment. This is mandatory now. Okay, right. Hello. Ablash, will you follow up the case? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, how will you follow up? Uh, so, uh, after the chemo radiation, uh, we again do. Uh, Medial laryngoscopy to know the response of the tumor. When? When? After one week. What, what is the problem? Yeah, what will you expect after one week? <laughs> Any patient? You must have seen. Yeah, of course. Eh? After irradiating the patient after one week, what are you expecting? What will you expect? Invariably, you already started Post. telling mucositis, radiation edema. Post. Invariably, there will be edema. It will be very difficult for you to assess. That's a problem. Or even if you see edema, you will never be able to say whether it is a residual disease, whether there is a recurrence, or whether it is radiation. Very difficult. So there is no point in assessing the patient immediately after radiotherapy. That's, a, that's the answer. This is the answer you should give. We'll keep the patient under follow up and then call up the patient later on. When? That's a question. Four to six weeks. Okay, maybe. And do a video laryngoscopy and assess the tumor and laryngeal vocal cord mobility. A blush. Uh... In this case, what was the uh, TNM staging? Stage 3, sir. T3, N1, M0. Yes, so whenever a patient is sent for a follow-up, uh, you should not be carried away only by the primary tumor. There are nodes. You should look for metastasis. You should always tell and learn this. Otherwise, then only you will be able to reproduce it in the exam also. 
if you uh, do a video laryngoscopy and tell that uh, there is no residual tumor then you will be missing a node uh, shibu repeatedly highlighted what is the problem with hypopharyngeal malignancy and neck nodes isn't it yes, and uh, you can have a distant metastasis developing later okay. is it uh, possible whenever a patient comes for a follow up majority of times we will be focusing only on the primary site that is not enough you should look for neck node and distant metastasis that is the follow up okay sir see the point is any patient after laryngeal malignancy hypopharyngeal malignancy the hoarseness will persist if there is hoarseness it will persist why because there is edema there you keep on asking the patient for a symptom already patient had earache see whether the earache has subsided if the earache reappears after some time that means that there is possible a lesion still there and this is how you should again you assess the neck then the possibility of metastasis is very high that means that you may have to take serial chest x rays that is important very important why because the possible why because you are not done anything for the metastasis it is still there you have only irradiated the neck maybe there is a very small lesion initially later on it may become apparent that means that you have to take serial chest x rays that's the importance okay. earlier when you were talking about radiology investigations you omitted one investigation radiology investigation at that time at time i just forgot that what is the other investigation radiology investigation uh barium is a fragment ah that's it you should always talk about barium solo also okay in those cases where it is difficult for you to do a flexible even a flexible scopy you should do a barium solo for the same reasons we discussed earlier okay yes yes okay shibu i think uh we have another 10 more minutes and after that many examiners are waiting outside to ask or uh, <clears throat> interact with abilash so 15 minutes we will give for the other examiners uh, sitting as audience okay. okay so can we can take 10 more minutes i hope so okay 10 minutes adane kodala adhe എടുക്കാമോ പത്ത് മിനിറ്റ് കൂടെ പിന്നെന്താ എന്താണ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് എ പെക്യുലേറ്റീവ് മാലിങ്സി ഹൈപ്പോഫൈറിങ് സിൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് മാലിങ്സി ഹൈപ്പോഫൈറിങ് ജസ്റ്റ് ടു ഫിനിഷ് ഇറ്റ് ഓഫ് പെക്യുലേറ്റീവ് മാലിങ്സി ആൻഡ് പോസ് ടു അദർ ഹെഡ് ആൻഡ് നെക്ക് മാലിങ്സിസ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് വെരി സ്പെസിഫിക് അബൌട്ട് മാലിങ്സി ഹൈപ്പോഫൈറിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ലേറ്റ് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ എർലി മെറ്റസ് വെരി ഗുഡ് അഡ്വാൻസ് സ്റ്റേജസ് അഡ്വാൻസ് സ്റ്റേജ് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ അറ്റ് അഡ്വാൻസ് സ്റ്റേജ് നമ്പർ 1 നമ്പർ 2 എർലി നമ്മൾ ഓൾറെഡി വി ഡിസ്കസ് വി ഡിസ്കസ് എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് പോയിന്റ്സ് നമ്പർ 2 എർലി മെറ്റസ്റ്റസിസ് metastasis is not early metastasis the patient the very high rate of metastasis, metastasis as compared to other head and neck malignancies and the most common site of metastasis is uh, neck level 2 3 neck metastasis alla varnad distant metastasis yeah pyriform sir pyriform most common site of metastasis is distant metastasis site lungs lungs sir ah, most common site is lung number 2 number 3 we already discussed about node ipam parnu node ne petti you already discussed about node number 4 Uh, uh, submucosal spread sir ah submucosal so what is the importance of submucosal spread in malignancy hypopharynx importance why should be you be wary of this uh, sir uh, uh, during surgery we have to respect margins very good that's it you should give appropriate clearance surgeon submucosal spread is most marked in which direction uh, sir inferior direction so what does it mean what is the implication Uh, sir, in post-cricoid malignancy, sir, that's it. Okay. Post-cricoid malignancy, you may have to give a clearance lower down, at least 3 cm clearance. That means that there is a resection of the esophagus as well. That is the importance. So, submucosal spread is important. Then what is? Then, uh, recurrence. Not recurrence. We, you already told that. Second primary. Second primary. one of the one of the malignancies of head and neck maximum incidence of second primary still what is the problem with treatment surgical treatment what is the problem laryngopharynx it's a very morbid surgery sir <laughs> don't say morbid since it is proximate the proximity of the hypopharynx to larynx it entails resection of the larynx as well 
that means that you have to think about the larynx also in case of hyperpharyngeal malignancy. So all these are almost unique in malignancy hypophatics. And again, we talked about performance status earlier. Yes. Performance status is very important for the patient. We discussed that earlier. And uh, Abhilash, what about the recurrent state? Is it less or high? High. Comparatively higher. So, uh, unlike a laryngeal malignancy, hypopharyngeal malignancy, you should have <clears throat> a regular follow. Yes. Suppose this patient is not willing for chemo radiation, what will you do? So, a total laryngectomy with partial pharyngectomies. You want to address the neck? With the. Uh, Bilateral neck dissection, modified radical neck dissection. Or can you do radical neck dissection on the side affected and uh, selective neck dissection on the opposite side? And uh, uh, will you give a post op radiotherapy? What is the criteria? You do a surgery after which? Bilateral radiotherapy. If the margins are not adequate, Extension. or if there is a extra nodal involvement, then you think about post op radio. Post -op radio. Think about this. There is no node there. And then your description what? There is a lesion on the medial wall of the piriform sinus with no involvement of the apex of the piriform sinus, no restricted mobility. 